Hello, Sarah here, and I'm just going to give you a quick overview of the function of the pituitary gland as one of the major players in the endocrine system. So just drawing on here is relation to the rest of the brain. So we've got here this little bit curling around, we've got the midbrain, and just going to try and scribble on the cortex here. And this little bit that looks like balls is the pituitary gland. And it does look like balls, I'm happy to say it. And I'm going to talk about balls later, so might as well get them out now. I'm going to zoom in and show you a little bit closer what it looks like. So just drawing on, this is the optic chiasm in the hypothalamus. And now we have the big old pituitary gland. It's not actually big, by the way, as you can see in relation to the head. So the part on top is the hypothalamus. And... Um, we have the posterior pituitary gland, I hope that's readable, and the anterior pituitary gland, which I've shown a bit bigger on here. There's a quite a big difference between how these two sections of the pituitary work. Um, the anterior pituitary gland is sometimes referred to as the adenohypophysis, and the posterior as the neurohypophysis, and that will come clear soon. There are five different cell types in the anterior pituitary which produce hormones, and I'm symbolising these with the letter that stands for them. So there are somatotrophs, thyrotrophs, gonadotrophs, lactotrophs, and corticotrophs. Now the hypothalamus releases hormones which stimulate these cells to produce the pituitary hormone which corresponds. So to start with, growth hormone releasing hormone triggers somatotrophs to produce human growth hormone, HGH. And human growth hormone stimulates um, organs and tissues like the liver, muscle and bone to produce insulin-like growth factors. And these are involved in, as you'd expect, growth, also protein synthesis, tissue repair and raising blood glucose. So that hypothalamic hormone stimulated that um, anterior pituitary cell to produce the pituitary hormone. It's a kind of two-step process to producing this end result which is going to have an effect on the body. And it's similar for all of the anterior pituitary hormones. The next one we're going to talk about is, well the hypothalamic releasing hormone that we talk about first is thyroid releasing hormone which triggers the thyrotrophs to produce thyroid stimulating hormone, TSH. And what this does is when it's released from the anterior pituitary it travels in the blood to the thyroid gland which is located in the neck, kind of on the trachea. And this then produces thyroid hormones. So again, two, you, I suppose you could say three step process starting with the hypothalamus hormone which triggers the anterior pituitary to produce the pituitary hormone which triggers the other organ or the other tissue to produce the last hormone. And thyroid hormones are involved in controlling metabolism. The next one we'll talk about is gonadotrophic releasing hormone produced by the hypothalamus, again travelling to the anterior pituitary and stimulating gonadotrophs to produce two hormones this time, follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. And these have different effects in men and women, so I'll write on what they do for each, roughly. This is only a really rough indication of what they do, because there isn't really time to go into detail. My aim was more to give an overview for this video. But in, I'll do some more videos to show the different feedback loops of how these individual hormones are controlled. So follicle-stimulating hormone, in women, it triggers... Um, the development of the oocytes, so that's a pretty sketchy looking diagram of a uterus <laughs> with fallopian tubes and ovaries. Um, and in men, it triggers the testes, see here are the balls, <laughs> again, to produce sperm. does look a bit like the pituitary, come on. So luteinizing hormone, in women, it triggers production of oestrogen and progesterone, and in men... Um, testosterone. So think of luteinizing hormone more being about producing those hormones. The next one we'll talk about is 
prolactin-releasing hormone produced by the hypothalamus travels to the anterior pituitary, stimulates the lactotroph cells to produce prolactin. This enters the blood and it stimulates the breasts to produce breast milk. And the next one, the final type of cell, is the corticotrophs. And these are stimulated by corticotrophic releasing hormone, or CRH, to produce ACTH, or adrenocorticotrophic hormone. And MSH, melanocyte stimulating hormone. ACTH travels in the blood to the adrenal cortex and triggers the production of glucocorticoids, um, in particular cortisol, which is the steroid involved in the stress response, fight or flight. Not much is actually known about MSH, other than the fact that high levels are related to a darker skin tone, if you think of melanin, and it's um, been thought to be involved in brain activity, but again, not much is known about it, and it's not that clinically relevant, at least at this level. So the posterior pituitary is different, as I said, it's known as the neurohypothesis because um, hormones aren't produced there, they're actually produced in the hypothalamus, in these neurosecretory cells which extend through the stalk or the infundibulum if we're going to be technical into the posterior pituitary where they are released by exocytosis just like uh, in a normal axon terminal and the, there's only two hormones produced by the posterior pituitary these are oxytocin and antidiuretic hormone ADH oxytocin is involved in um, the breasts and also contraction of the uterus during labour. And antidiuretic hormone is produced in response to low levels of water in the blood or low blood pressure. And what it does is it triggers the nephron to reabsorb water so we can raise our blood pressure that way. So just to recap, posterior pituitary, two hormones are released. These are released by neurons from the hypothalamus as opposed to being produced in the posterior pituitary. They're actually just stored in the posterior pituitary, which is different to the anterior pituitary, which has different cell types, and these are stimulated by hormones from the hypothalamus to produce pituitary hormones. Five different cell types produce seven different hormones in total. So back up at the skull, We've got the sphenoid bone, which has the hypophyseal fossa, which is the little cup that contains the pituitary. And just drawing on little bits I've missed here. CRH in green. And then I'm going to write out the names of these different hypothalamic-releasing hormones to correspond with the, um, the letters, just for completeness, so that this picture is useful in itself. So again, this has just been a really quick overview of the role of the pituitary and the hormones it produces. But each of these individually has its own feedback mechanism that um, controls its level in the blood and in the body because the level of a hormone is really vital to its function. So I hope to talk about those in some more videos. Thank you for watching.